So here is another problem of mechanics, which is that of a bead on a rotating wire or a rod. So you have a particle of mass m, which is free to slide on a thin rod or a wire. However, this wire or rod is uh, rotating on a plane about one end at some constant angle of velocity, like this. So obtain the solution of motion for the particle, ignore gravity and friction. So this point mass particle is somehow free to slide on this kind of a wire or a rod while the rod is rotating at some constant angle of velocity, which is given by omega. Now let's suppose R is the radial displacement of this point mass particle from let's suppose the origin O. In this case, we want to obtain the solution of motion for this particle. Of course, the particle is restricted to angular velocity omega in its uh, angular uh, direction. However, we can obtain the radial solution for the position of the particle. There is a way to do it using Newtonian approach. However, in this video, I'm going to solve this using the Lagrangian approach where I'm going to use the Euler-Lagrange equations to obtain an equation of motion for this kind of a point mass particle. So to uh, apply the Lagrange equations, what we first need to do is, first we need to know what is the uh, Lagrangian in this kind of a case. So the Lagrangian is nothing but L is equal to T minus V, where T is the uh, kinetic energy in V is the potential energy. In this case, the kinetic energy can be written as half of M V R square plus half of m v theta square. Now basically I'm trying to look at this problem in polar coordinates, all right? So not necessarily in x, y coordinate, but I'm going to talk about the physical quantities in terms of the polar coordinates. So if you look at polar coordinates, the displacement, the radial displacement happens along this particular direction. And v r is nothing but the radial velocity, which is the velocity along the radial direction. v theta happens as an angular displacement along a tangential direction to the radial direction. And v theta is the angular velocity along this particular direction in the tangential axis all right so where vr is nothing but dr upon dt all right so this is r dot and v theta is nothing but r omega so omega is the angular velocity all right so this can be written as r d theta upon dt so this is nothing but r theta dot all right so the ki kinetic energy of the entire uh, system can therefore be written as half m r dot square plus r theta dot r square theta dot square all right so this is the kinetic energy and since this particle is not experiencing gravity and it's not experiencing any kind of friction we can say that let's suppose the potential is equal to zero so now finally we have an expression for the lagrangian so the lagrangian is nothing but l is equal to t minus v so l is equal to v zero so this is half m r dot square plus half m r square theta dot square that's it now the approach of using lagrangian mechanics is that we want to apply the euler lagrange's equation so the lagrange's equation is written as something like this d upon dt of del l upon del r dot minus del l upon del r is equal to zero. Now this uh, kind of a system or this kind of a point mass particle has two coordinates, yes? So there can be the radial displacement and there can be the angular displacement in this direction. However, as we already know that this rod is moving with some constant angular velocity, this point mass particle is also restricted or constrained by this rod. So this point mass particle will also have the same angular velocity because it is constrained by this rod, okay? So we are not going to look into the angular uh, displacement because we already know that the point mass particle will have an angular velocity same as this omega here however we are only interested in the radial sort of a uh, 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 displacement with respect to time therefore i have only written the lagrange equation in terms of the radial displacement r so with respect to r i have written this so we need to obtain these expressions first so what is del l upon del r so del l upon del r we can obtain from here so first term will come out to be zero the second term will simply come out to be two upon two m r theta dot square so this is del l upon del r Similarly, you can find the other terms. What is del L upon del R dot? So del L upon del R dot. So will the second term will come out to be zero. The first term is nothing but two upon two, two will get canceled. M R dot, right? And what is D by DT of del L upon del R dot? So that is nothing but M 
are double dot. So we have obtained all of these expressions. So let's apply these expressions here in this given equation. All right. So if we apply these expressions here, in that case, this kind of an equation simply becomes. So the first expression is this m r double dot minus m r theta dot square is equal to zero or m r double dot minus r theta dot whole square is equal to zero. So m goes to the right hand side becomes zero and you're left with d2 r upon dt2 because this double dot simply represents the derivative with respect to time minus r. What is theta dot? Theta dot is nothing but the derivative of angular displacement with respect to time. So this is nothing but omega, the angular velocity with which the particle is restricted towards, uh, restricted to the rod. All right. So this is nothing but omega square is equal to zero. So this is the equation of motion of this kind of a point mass particle, and it basically gives us an idea about the radial displacement. All right. All right. So this is a standard differential equation which uh, looks like let's suppose d two y upon d x two. Uh, minus some constant square y is equal to zero. So this is a standard differential equation which has a solution that looks like this. Y x is nothing but some constant a e to the power minus c x plus b uh, e to the power uh, some cons uh, this constant c and x. All right. So this is a standard differential equation solution. I'm not going to do the solution for the differential equation itself. If you take up any book on differential equations, you will find that this kind of an equation will have a standard solution that looks like this. So the solution for this equation basically gives us the solution for the equation of motion. So finally, we have the solution for the equation of motion, which is basically nothing but RT is equal to some constant a e to the power minus omega t plus b e to the power omega t. So as you can see, it, this solution contains two terms, two exponential terms. The first term is an exponentially decreasing term and the second term is an exponentially increasing term. So we can have two kinds of cases which are which are possible. So if let's suppose b is equal to zero, the constant b is equal to zero. In that case, the uh, solution rt will be nothing but a e to the power minus omega t. So this is an exponentially decreasing sort of a, a, a graph. So if b is equal to zero, in that case, the particle is going to move towards the origin, but it will never reach the origin in the first place. First place, it will only keep on moving towards the origin at an exponential exponential rate. If in the case number two, where neither b neither a is equal to zero, in that case, of course, r t is simply given by this expression a e to the power minus omega e to the power minus omega t plus b e to the power omega t. That means and in this case, the second term is going to dominate because the first term is an exponentially decreasing term and the second term is an exponentially increasing term. So this term is going to dominate uh, for larger values of time period and it's going to go towards infinity as time also goes towards infinity. So what is going to happen is that this particle is going to as this rod is uh, moving with constant angular velocity omega, this particle is going to move outwards uh, with exponential uh, 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 displacement with respect to time. All right because this second term is going to dominate. So this is the solution for a bead moving on a rotating wire or a rod.